Hi friends, if you usually spend ages like me fighting with Microsoft Word to properly format a book for KDP, or if you are simply looking for an easier and faster alternative, then Kindle Create may be the solution for you. Kindle Create is the official Amazon KDP book formatting tool. It's completely free and even if it is pretty basic, I'd say it definitely does the job and has a good variety of features from simple text formatting to automatic table of content creations and page numbers. On top of that, one of the main advantages is that you can format the book once and then upload the same file both for the Kindle and paperback versions. So in this video, let's see how it works and how we can quickly format a book to publish on KDP. Let's get started. First thing, you'll need of course to download the application from Amazon and install it. I will put the link in the description below, it is available at the moment for Windows and Mac OS. Also, in this tutorial I will use the sample manuscript of Pride and Prejudice provided by Amazon, so make sure to check out the link in the description to follow along. When you open the app, double click on the Create New button to start a new project. Kindle Create allows us to work on three different kinds of books, Reflowable, Comics and Print Replica. Reflowable is actually for fiction and non-fiction ebooks and paperbacks, based mainly of text with perhaps some images here and there sporadically. Comics is actually pretty much self-explanatory for graphic novels and comics. And the print replica is for publications with a heavy interior design like magazines and cookbooks, where it is important for the Kindle version to maintain the original interior design to make sense basically. Let's select a reflowable and select choose file to import our manuscript. It does accept doc and docx files. Now, this is the main Kindle Create view. The very first thing that this software does is to try to guess what the chapters of the book are, to build the book structures accordingly. This may not be perfect sometimes, it depends actually on your manuscript, but it looks pretty much accurate in general to me. You can select the ones that are correct and press accept selected. Cool, let's have a quick overview of the sections now. The left panel is the content of the book, divided into three sections. The front matter is everything before the actual content, like the title, copyright page and table of contents. The body is the actual book content, divided into chapters. And the back matters is eventually anything that comes after the main content, like a section about the author, for example. It's very important that every element of the book follows this structure here so that Kindle Create can automatically adjust the formatting and stuff like the page numbers for the print version and the clickable table of content for the Kindle version. And I can also conveniently navigate through the book clicking the individual elements. The right panel is where I have more specific information about the text element currently selected and where I can customize the elements and the formatting more specifically. To quickly change the theme of the book, I can press the theme button here and I currently can choose between four different themes. It doesn't change dramatically, but at least we can change instantly the font for the chapter's titles, the alignment and the separator element. I think I'm going to go with the classic one for Pride and Prejudice, seems pretty appropriate. Now let's start adding a title, copyright page and table of contents. I can click the plus icon here in the front matter section, click title page and then fill it with the info like Pride and Prejudice and Jane Austen and create page. To add the copyright page, the process is very similar. Just click on the plus button in the front matter section and select copyright. Now I just need to insert the author's name and the year of publication and there is already a basic copyright text already written for us, but please make sure to use the correct information and not the default ESBN, for example. Now, actually, Pride and Prejudice is in the public domain, so this is a bit silly, but just for the sake, let's put Jane Austen and 1813 in here. To create a clickable table of contents, the process is very similar. This time, we need to select table of contents and confirm that the chapters are correct indeed. A couple of things are worth mentioning here. The first is that every item is a link, which is what we want for our ebook version. The second is that the table of contents doesn't come with page numbers apparently, which again is totally fine because this is the ebook version that we are editing and the pages are displayed dynamically in the ebook reader depending on local settings like font size. This is why this type of book is called reflowable in Kindle Create. But if you look here on the right panel, they say that the paperback version will include page numbers. 
and that the page numbers will depend on the final trim size that we select on KDP. So the good thing is that they will be placed automatically later and we don't have to worry about making some mistakes with the page numbers now. Also, every page before chapter 1 will be numbered in Roman numbers, while the actual page count will start with chapter 1, which is nicer and more professional in my opinion. Now let's move to the main body. We can remove this section here, which was the old title, and this is chapter 1. One thing that I don't really like is when there is no separation between the chapter's title and the text. So I'll show you the proper way to insert a separation once that works for every chapter. Because I could just hit enter, but if I go to chapter 2, then there is no separation again. But instead, if I go on the formatting tab here, I can change the spacing below the title for every chapter. But you know what? Another thing that I really like is the drop cap for the first paragraph of the chapter, which is the very first letter in big and nicely styled. To do that, I can simply check this apply drop cap box here. But here's the trick, look at this. If I move to the elements tab, then select the first paragraph and then apply the styling for chapter first paragraph, I get both the spacing and the drop cap. But unfortunately, this setting doesn't apply automatically to every chapter, so I need to go over the chapters and add it manually. Here's a pro tip, if you like keyboard shortcuts, you can actually press Ctrl Alt F to do it quickly. Just for the sake of demonstration, let's add a separator element in here just to see how it works. All you need to do is to go on the right panel and under standard elements, just choose separator. And that's it, nicely styled. To add a link to a web page, all I need to do is to select the text, then add a link from here and add the URL. Remember that it is very important to paste the full URL, including HTTPS colon slash slash. Alternatively, you can just highlight the text, then right click with the mouse and press add a link. Now, if Jane Austen wanted to add an image of herself using Kindle Create, that would be easy as well. I can just press insert here, select my image and that's it. Or right click as well, like we saw before. On the right panel, a description for the image is required unless I exclude the image from the screen reader, which I can do if it is not necessary to understand the content of the book. I can also choose the size and the layout like if I want to have the text on the right or on the left of it. I do have very few options here, but they work fine, so I'm happy enough. Usually images are tricky in a book, like if I try to get the same result in Microsoft Word, chances are that I will lose the formatting in the actual ebook reader because of the conversion from doc to KDP. But in Kindle Create, if we want to be sure that everything is all right, we can launch a preview to see how the book would appear on multiple devices. So I can click here to launch a preview and I can switch between phone, tablet and Kindle reader and as you can see it does maintain the layout and everything seems fine really, looking good and professional. There is actually another very important thing to do before exporting, which is to check the print settings. As we said previously, we can upload the same file on KDP for both the paperback and Kindle version. But how does it work for the page numbers and right or left margins? Well, these settings let you decide how you want the page numbers to be in the print version, like at the center, at the corner, at the bottom, at the top and so on. And about the margins, it depends on the final trim size that you will select on KDP. And this is really cool because you don't have to stress about looking for the perfect margins or formatting templates since margins can become more complicated for print books because of the book binding. Once you're ready, you can click export and it will export the book in KPF format, which is Kindle package format. And then you're ready to upload it on KDP. We have seen how this tool can be quick and easy to use and perfect for having a professional looking book, both the Kindle and print version, without worrying of margin, trim size, page numbers, clickable table of contents and so on, which is awesome. But there are some cons that are worth mentioning when using Kindle Create. And the first is that of course this tool is fairly basic, as we said, and doesn't allow a complete customization. And the second is that the final file size could be a bit higher than other formatting tools. And this could have a minimum impact on your royalties. So make sure to check the file size before uploading. But other than Microsoft Word, there are alternatives to Kindle Create, like Atticus, for example, which is a paid tool that is quickly becoming the favorite one among the publishers. 
But let me know in the comments down below which software are you currently using and which one you would like to learn next. And if you want to see how I quickly make book cover designs for my books, watch this video here where I show you how to create a professional book cover in minutes. I'll see you there.